In high school, I played competitive basketball. And every season, there was this one team that we were just evenly matched, game in and game out. We would win a game, they would win a game. We would win a game, they win a game. The energy was always super high and just super, super fun. The games were always close-knit, the crowds were always ecstatic. It was just some of the best basketball I've ever played. But there's one game in mind that really sticks out in memory. And that was the game at the end of the season to decide who would go on to playoffs. Now, as you can imagine, this is just a little bit more tense. It's a little bit more energetic, right? Because this is the potential end for a season of basketball. So we go in, we start playing, and we got a good momentum. We got some good points up on the board. And about halftime, we are up by like four or six points. Now, in case you don't know basketball, that's not a whole lot. Uh, that can change pretty quick in just a matter of seconds. So we go into halftime, we're winning, it's going great. The third quarter, I, I don't really know what happened. We just didn't play as well, but the other team, they started playing really well. And at the end of the third quarter, we were down by eight points. We were now losing. So going into the fourth quarter, we were losing by eight points. And I'm sitting there and I'm just so frustrated because I'm like, guys, this is the end of the season. We gotta go on to the playoffs, come on. Like if this is the movie, if this is a movie, this is the scene where like the crowd is going crazy, the stadium's electric and the coach comes out and he says, all right guys, we're gonna draw up this play for the star player. Can you make it? And he goes, I can make it. And then they drop the play, he goes, shoots the three and they win the game. That's not what happened with us. <laughs> My coach comes out, a little bit elderly man, calmly goes, all right, guys, this is where we can win the game. As a player, I'm like, what are you doing, coach? We need some energy. We need some passion and excitement. What we don't need is for you to tell us, this is a great spot to win the game. No, guys, come on, coach. A great spot to win the game is when we're up by like 10 or 12 points with like two minutes left in the fourth quarter. That's a great spot to win the game. What's not a great spot to win the game is when you're losing at the beginning of the last quarter, potentially of the basketball season. That's not a great spot to win. But I kept my mouth shut, followed coach, because coach knows best, right? We go out to play, fourth quarter starts. The guy who had not shot a three all game, wasn't making anything, gets the ball in the corner, shoots it right through the middle of the net. Crowd goes crazy, our bench goes crazy, and it was that one small victory that created a little bit of momentum and a little bit of victory for us. We actually ended up winning that game and going on to the playoffs. Now, super exciting, but I gotta give props where props are due. My coach had this thing called long-term perspective. He looked at our skill and our ability and where we are at in the game, and he saw the end game, and he said, oh yeah, we, we can do this. Like eight points, pff, it's nothing. We got this in the back. While I, on the other hand, did not have a long-term perspective. I had short-term perspective. I was looking at the very real, very annoying fact that we were losing by eight points and this was potentially the last game of our basketball season. Now, if two or three of the other guys on the team had that perspective or had that mindset with me, I can't say that we would have won the game. And I think a lot of times in life, it's the same thing with our struggles. It's the same with the battles that we have, with the tense relationships that we might have with coworkers or with family members. We have these seasons or these moments in life where it feels like all we can think about, all that we just can't ignore is the thing that's right in front of us. And granted, there are some times where we can't ignore it, right? Like we have to address it, but it's not fun. <laughs> it's extremely uncomfortable. And then we go to church or we go to small group and the friends and small group leaders say, hey, how, how are you doing? How's your week? And you respond with, oh, it's going great. Living the dream. It's amazing. But what they don't know is that you and your wife just had an argument for the last hour about finances. Hey, are you ready to go off to college? Ready to start this new season? I'm ready to move out the house. But what we don't say is that I've actually been struggling a whole lot with my emotional and mental health and I am terrified to leave. In those moments, I think subconsciously we identify with ourselves with living with a counterfeit faith. That when we go to church, we sing the songs, we hear the message, it's great, we go to group and it's great, but man, there's so much going on inside that we just don't talk about, that we don't wanna talk about. And so we keep inside, and then when it comes to these hard moments of life, when it comes to those seasons, or to what I would like to call them those turning points, we really struggle through them. We battle them, we go back and forth with the inconsistency of emotions and not the convenience of any given situation, right? I think one reason we struggle in these seasons, these hard moments, these battles, or these turning points in life is because we have 
accidentally started to believe this thought that if we trust God, that God will make everything easier. That if I just pray a prayer in the morning and say, God, you know, I'm struggling with this, my coworker, I'm ready to throw him out a window, but I'm going to give him to you. And then it's like supposed to make everything easy. God, man, I just, I don't know where the bills are going to be paid this month, but I'm trusting that you're going to make it happen. God, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do about my relationship. And there's this thought in the back of our mind that tells us that if we trust God, he makes everything easy that he fixes every single situation that we could go through, that every battle or struggle can be fixed with the snap of his fingers. While that he does have the ability to do that because God is all powerful, it doesn't seem that he always fixes those struggles and those battles. You see, these turning points in life, the struggles that we have in life, the battles, the, the, the moments where it just feels like it is so hard and struggling, these moments can really be a turning point, not just in our life, but with our faith, with our Heavenly Father. I'm sure we can all look back to a season of life where there was a lot of struggle, there was a lot of emotion or ter turmoil. Maybe there was some, uh, some battles you had within the family with intentions or finances were tight. Whatever that may be for you, you went through it and then you came out on the other side and it was just like <laughs> a sigh of relief, like, whew, glad that's behind us. We can all think back to a season and say, yeah, that was hard. We struggled a lot, but man, we got through it and now we have learned because of it, right? Maybe that was you learned how to finance better. Maybe that you learned how to communicate. Whatever that may be, you grew from it. But man, in that, in that moment, it definitely didn't feel like you were growing. It felt like you were faking it, getting it through. It felt like you didn't see the emotional or the character growth that was happening. These turning points in life can really be the direction of the rest of our life or our walk with Christ. I have seen many times where I've had my friends go through situations or my family or even myself where we had these turning points and it was great coming out on the other side. We were like so much more in tune with the Lord. We were hearing his voice. We had great habits of reading our Bible. It was great. But then I've also been through seasons and I've seen seasons with friends where they went through a turning point, a struggle, and they stopped going to church. They stopped tuning into small groups during the week. And it's not because they didn't love Jesus or I didn't love Jesus at that season. It's not because we weren't here on Sunday mornings or, or not going to Thursday night Bible study. It's because we started to doubt God a little bit. We stopped trusting him with those more delicate situations in life, with those struggles, the things that we hold a little bit more closely. We lost a little bit of trust in God in the turning points of our life. And today's story that we're going to be looking at in the Bible is right in the middle of this turning point for a family. There's this family with three siblings of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And their siblings, Mar or Lazarus being the older brother and then having two younger sisters. Now, these, now this family was close friends with Jesus. Now sadly in this story, Lazarus falls deathly ill and he's battling some kind of sickness. And Martha and Mary reach out to Jesus because at this point in Jesus' life, he's done countless miracles. He's healed people, friends, family, even the Roman government that was persecuting him. And they reach out to him and they say, hey Jesus, you know our brother, our good brother, your close friend, he's falling sick. Can you just come over here and just like lay your hands on him or just maybe say the word and he'll be healed. They reached out to a friend, to Christ, knowing in confidence that he had the power to do that. And sadly, Jesus never showed up, never responded, never sent a letter or a text back saying, oh, I'll come in a few days. And sadly, Lazarus passed on and was buried in a tomb. And in the middle of this story is where, where we pick up in the middle of this story is where Jesus comes into the town where Martha, Mary are living and where Lazarus is buried. In John chapter 11, verse 20, it says, as soon as Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Yet even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Now, this is two or three short verses, but I want to unpack this a little bit because there is a lot here. Put yourself in Martha's shoes. Your friend just died. Your brother just passed away. You reached out to God, asking him to fix the situation to heal your brother, and he seemingly just ghosted you. She was a little hurt, maybe frustrated. There was some fear going on of not knowing what was going to happen in life. 
And she, when she comes to Jesus, she's bringing all of her emotion and all of her pain and frustration, saying, God, if you had been here, my brother would have been healed. My family would be restored. Lord, if you had been here, ah, oh, things would have been so much better. The situation was not fixed in Martha's eyes. There was a moment of fear, a moment of struggle, a moment of just being completely honest. You see, that's what turning points do in our life. They focus or they sharpen our focus. They bring attention to maybe some emotions or thoughts that we don't necessarily want to talk about. <laughs> maybe some beliefs that we don't want to even examine. They might expose some of the emotions that we've been hiding for potentially years on end. And in these moments where we are focused in on our emotions and what we're going through and what we might even believe, sometimes we ask questions like, what is God really like? I mean, honestly, I thought he was supposed to be this provider, this protector, that was supposed to fix every situation, and I am hurting like no tomorrow. I'm struggling like no tomorrow. I'm at the end of my rope. God, are you, what, what are you really like? Sometimes it looks like questions like asking, do I even really trust God? Do I really trust God with my finances? I mean, I don't know where the bills are going to be paid. It's not like someone's going to come up and just hand me $1,200. It's not, I, I don't have the cure for the sickness. I don't know what's going to happen. Am I really trusting God? Do I really trust that he's going to come through and provide and protect everything that I need? These are some of the emotions or thoughts that Martha was probably going through. This is the situation where she's in. And yet, in the worst day of her life that is recorded in Scripture, at the, at the bottom of her hurt, where she is in the most anguish, the most confusion, and the most pain in life, after telling God, this is how I feel, and this is how you should have fixed my situation, see, she says, yet even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. I know, Lord, that whatever you do, it is a good thing. Lord, I know that I asked of this thing and I wanted this situation to be fixed with this exact way, but I'm trusting in you. I'm bringing all my pain, I'm bringing all my hurt, and I'm giving it to you, and I'm trusting that you are going to move and to provide a way for this. You see, Martha's faith and relationship in God was not built on him fixing everything. It was not built in the inconsistency of her emotions, nor in the convenience of her situation. Her relationship and her faith with God was built in a deep trust with Christ. Yet even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus would respond to say, your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. Martha said to him, I, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. It's, it's obvious. Jesus would then say, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Now, this is a moment where Jesus is telling Martha, like, hey, it, it's okay. You're going to be fine. It's all going to work out. And Martha's like, yeah, God, I, I know it's all going to work out. Like, I know one day in heaven I'm going to see him again, and it's all going to be fine. I know at the end of my days, like, I'll look back. Like, it'll be fine. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. Not someday off in the future right now with me. It's going to be okay. God is not some God that is off in a distant land waiting for you to pick yourself up and to walk over to him. He's not there waiting for you to go, I wonder what he's going to do. No, 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 no. What he's telling Martha in this situation is that those who can trust Jesus with their pain, even in the midst of deep pain, will have an eternal hope. Jesus is reaffirming that those who trust in him, even in the midst of deep pain, in the most anguish that you've ever been in, the most confused that you've ever been in, can have an eternal hope. Why? Because our pain, the turning points in life, is not the end. The pain that we go through, the struggles that we have, the battles that we endure, there is a purpose for them. 
We're not here just to go through the motions. We're not here just to suffer and to take loss and to just continue on with life. No, we are here. We are designed and built with intention and purpose to have a relationship with God. And that's what the turning points in life are for. There are opportunities to say, my emotions tell me this, my heart and my mind is telling me this, but I am believing that God is going to come through. I'm going to trust God with the more vulnerable parts of my life. Jesus would then go on to tell Martha, everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who comes into the world. I believe, God, that even though my situation says this and my feelings are telling me this, I believe, Lord, that you are going to provide. Not because she could see it with her eyes right in front of her, not because she saw the way out, not because there was this plan written out on a tablet for her to read, but because more than anything else, more than what her emotions and what her situation was telling her, she had a deeper trust and faith in Christ. Just a few verses later, after this encounter with Martha and Jesus, they would go back to the house that Mary was uh, staying at when Martha had left. And in John verse 33, it says, when Jesus saw her crying, referring to Mary, when Jesus saw her crying and the Jews who had come with her crying, he was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. Where have you put him, he asked. Lord, they told him, come and see. So they take Jesus to the tomb of Lazarus. When they arrived at the tomb, it is recorded that Jesus wept. At the tomb of Lazarus, when everyone else is going through pain and they're mourning the loss of a friend, Jesus wept. The word in the Greek for all the scholars in here is not a, like I shed a couple tears, but it is a pain that is emotional or physical that derives an emotional reaction. He is weeping with his friends. Now, this is not just some record that John puts in Scripture as like to point back to historical accuracy of Jesus wept. He was there. That's not what John is writing down. What John is saying is when Jesus wept, this is showing the 100% of Christ's humanity with us. That they, that again, God is not somewhere off in the future waiting for us to get ourselves together and to figure life out and to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and continue on. No, God is with you in the pain. Jesus is with you in the pain. Later in the Bible, there's a book called Hebrews where it talks about that we don't have a high priest, that we don't have a savior who is unable to sympathize with our struggles and with our temptations. Jesus knows what you're going through. He understands the emotion, the pain, the hurt, the confusion that you're going through. And he's not waiting on you. He's there with you. He's there to walk with you in the pain and in the hurt and in the suffering. Because why? Because he wants a deep relationship with you. I think sometimes we have this superficial relationship with God where it's like we come to church, we go to Bible study, but we never see a move of God happen in our life. Our relationship never goes deep. I think it's sometimes because we're, we're, we're scared to give God the more vulnerable parts of our heart and of our emotions. But that's exactly what Christ wants with you. That's the exact kind of relationship that he wants with you, where you can be honest and open and vulnerable about the most scary and, and, and more important parts of your life. Why? Because he's not somewhere far out. He's with you in the moment. Jesus wept at the tomb of Lazarus. The Jews would take notice of this. See, and the, so the Jews said, see how he loved him. Jesus had a relationship with Lazarus. And so when he, Lazarus is not there, when he's gone and he sees everybody else, he's weeping with them. And you see, when we're in the middle of a turning point, like everybody in this situation is, it gets our attention and we can always find Jesus in the middle of it with us. In the middle of this, of this situation, we're at their tomb. They're taking notice like, hey, God's here with us and he's crying. And I think sometimes we often overlook where Jesus is in our turning points, in our struggles. You see, Jesus walks with you not to just give you the right answer, not to just fix the situation, but because he wants to grow in a deep relationship with you. And so when we're in the middle of our turning points, when we're in the middle of the pain and of the confusion or whatever situation you're going through, remind yourself, hey, Jesus is here with me. He is here with me. He is here to guide me. He is here to carry me. And he is here to provide a way for me. At the tomb, 
Jesus would continue to talk with Martha. And he would say, didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And so the, he then asks the servants to remove the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd standing here, I said this, so that they may believe you sent me. After he said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out bound in foot with the linen straps and with his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, go and unwrap him and let him go. You see, what was impossible for Mary and Martha to be reunited with their brother became possible. They're standing at this tomb, and Jesus says, hey, let's move that doorway real quick. Let's, let, let, let's open this up. And they're all kind of sitting there looking at him because uh, if you've never had, like, a teenager who not showered for four or five days, that's the stench that's coming out of this because Lazarus has been dead for four or five days at this point. And so they're a little confused. They're, they're kind of looking around the corner like, what is he about to do? And then he, Lazarus, come out. And out comes the mummified. Jesus, what, what are you doing? Go, go and wrap him. Let him go. Let him be free. The impossible in that moment became possible. What was impossible to Mary and Martha with Christ became possible. So when we trust Jesus in our pain, when we give him those emotions that we're scared and in the vulnerable parts of us, the impossible then becomes possible. The struggle that you've had for years on end that you were just scared to talk to about somebody, the, the hill that you think you can't overcome, can be overcome. The relationship that you want to see restored, that you think is impossible to, to go back to a, to a talking relationship with, you can have that restored. What is impossible to us and our control with our understanding becomes possible when we grow in a relationship with Christ. Our bottom line for today is that God uses, he uses these turning points to grow us in a relationship with him. These turning points are not there for us to suffer. They're not there for us to battle and just to go in, in and out, and, and just be done with it. The turning points in life, the struggles of life, are opportunities for us to grow in a deep relationship with Christ. Now, here is an inevitable truth. You are going to have another turning point. You're going to have another struggle. There's going to be another argument there's going to be another tense relationship at some point in life. Maybe you find yourself in that situation right now. Whether if that's you or if it's coming down the line later in life, I want to give you some questions and some thoughts to help guide us in those situations. First question is, where is my heavenly father in this? Where is my heavenly father moving? What is he doing? I think sometimes we get those short-term perspectives when it comes to our struggles, and all we can see is the stress, the battle, the, the, the inevitable thing in front of us, and we forget to look for where God is moving in our life. Where is God providing? Because once you start looking for something, you then will find it everywhere. If you start looking for the pain and for the confusion and for the hurt, you're going to find it. But if you start looking for where your heavenly father is, what he's doing, how he's moving, how he's growing you, what he's providing in life, you will find it. Next question I want you to ask, how can this situation help grow my relationship with Jesus? How can this situation push me closer to Christ? What area of life am I scared to trust him with? whether if that's your finances, your, your, your kids, you're your going to school, moving across the country, whatever it is, whatever you're scared to trust Jesus with, whatever you're scared to be vulnerable with, give it to him. Grow in relationship with him. God, I'm scared that if I say this thing that they'll act in this way and, and it'll just be a mess and, and I don't want to do a mess, I don't want to continue that, I don't want to make it worse, give it to him. Take a deep breath, pray, Lord, help me guide this. This is how I'm feeling. I want to fix this, but I'm trusting in you. God, I don't know where she's going. I don't know what she's going to do, but I'm trusting that you are moving in ways that cannot be seen. I'm trusting that you are moving in ways that I can't move. I'm trusting that you can do the impossible where I cannot. God uses our turning points in life to grow in a relationship with God uses these turning points, these battles, these struggles 
to grow us deeper in a relationship so that we can be, so that we can see the impossible become possible, so that we can grow in confidence that the Lord is moving. In just a few minutes, the band is going to come out and is going to lead us in one more song for the day. And I don't, I want to encourage you to not let this be just another song. Don't just stand here and, and say or sing the lyrics. Don't just bop your head to it. But let this be a truth to remind your heart and your mind that I'm going to see a victory in every situation. Not because of what I can control, not because of what I can do, not because I know the answer to everything, but because I am growing in relationship with Christ. Because God, I'm seeing God move in my heart and move in my life and even through me. And it's because of that, it's because of those turning points that we can have victory. Because God uses those turning points, the struggles and the battles in life to grow us and deep relationship with him. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you are with us in every situation. We thank you that you are with us in every pain, in every hard moment, in every turning point of life, Lord, that you are not some deity that is far off, but that you are a personal God that wants a deep relationship with us. Lord, for the person in here who is in a turning point right now, who doesn't see the other side of the battle that is going through the struggle and doesn't know where where it's going, we pray, Lord, that you would move in their life and move in their heart. Lord, we pray that you would equip us to be able to remind our hearts and our minds that even in the worst moments, even in the hardest battles and the most confusing moments, that those are situations not for us to overcome, not for us to fix on ourselves, but to grow in relationship and a deep relationship with you. And it is through that that we can find the most fulfilling life and rewarding life that we can have. God, we thank you that you are not far off and that you cannot unsympathize, but that you are with us and that you know what we're doing and you have compassion and empathy with us in every situation. Dear Lord, we pray this, all of this, in the power of Jesus' name. Amen.